Welcome to Menopause, Marriage and Motherhood, a podcast that's all about changing the way we view midlife and bringing the conversation about menopause out into the open. Each week we share stories, experiences and inspiration. We talk to experts on how to best navigate this time of life and find out how other people have not only survived but thrived through this time. I'm your host, Karen O'Connor. Hello and welcome. Today I'm here with Brenda Rogers. Brenda is the founder and owner of Quintessence Women's Health. She's got more certifications than I could poke a stick at. I'm going to get some of these wrong, but I'm going to read them out because there's so many of them. So she's a certified coach, a naturopath, a nutritionist, a certified clinical aromatherapist, an energy healer. She's a yoga teacher. She's an art of feminine presence teacher. She's a chapter leader for Western A. Price Foundation, which is a charity promoting wise traditions in food, farming, and healing. She's a natural fertility practitioner, a wise woman educator. She's got an MBA. She used to be in corporate life, and now she leads women and helps them make the transition through menopause without, well, being powerful and without going through that many, uh, what can I call them, issues, problems, sleeplessness, weight gain, all that. So she does all this for women, which is right up our alley, right up my alley. So I'm really pleased to meet you. Thank you, Brenda. Oh, thanks, Karen. I'm loving it. Thank you. <laughs> so you, I was reading a bit about you. So you started off as a nutritionist and then you went into the corporate world and then you went you got made redundant and went back to nutritionist and you did some you went out to Uluru as Rock Alice Springs I'm trying to think of all the names here the different names to do a week's work with the traditional the indigenous elders there didn't you which the women the yeah. women yeah mm-hmm. tell me a bit about yourself and how you ended up doing what you're doing and tell me about that that week in Uluru because that just sounds amazing well I studied I decided to become a naturopath fairly early I was in my early 20s and I I was of this kind of rebellious spirit that I didn't want to do the traditional thing and I've gotten me into a lot of trouble in my life but so I moved to Sydney and I studied naturopathy and I when I finished I was still in my 20s and I didn't know anything and I couldn't I, I had no money and all the rest of it. So I went and worked for Blackmores. And I ended up being at Blackmores for six years, I think. But there was this in my heart, this desire to be a, well, I don't even know if it's a desire. Maybe it's like divine contract or something. It was is to be a healer. I didn't think I was a healer and I didn't feel competent or confident enough to be a healer it was like no healing is for special people that's not me so I I kind of go back to corporate and then I I get I get fired or I you know I get sick of it or something would happen and then I'd go and try and be a naturopath again and then that would I'd run out of money and it was this just torturous process going back and forth and then at some point I got made redundant from another health company that I worked for and that was very painful and I just went what am I supposed to be doing here and I had no idea I had no clue and so I decided to I spent like six months of watching all these inspirational videos and then that in that was where I went to Ayers Rock Uluru for this Aboriginal Women Elders Camp. And it was all this process in circle, this women's wisdom stuff. It wasn't really the kind of women's wisdom that I was expecting because they're very tribal. They you know, they were throwing the, the kangaroo tails on the fire and, and eating, eating that for dinner and they had the sort of the rubbish that was around. They just threw it away and, you know, it was very, very eye-opening actually. But this path of rediscovering traditional wisdom has been there in this, this thread that has been throughout my life. Uh, and at the end of that, those five days, the rest of the, the week was we went to, to Alice Springs and we spent a couple of days with an Aboriginal healer, a gentleman, 
And he took us around to all the sacred sites and, and discussed the herbs and all the, that kind of thing as well. And I think from all of that, the message to me was that I can't run away from this and go and find a job that makes me good money or something. I have to follow what wants me, the vocation or the life purpose that wants me. But I was always so stubborn, always always so resistant. Even after that, I started my own business as a naturopath. And, you know, along the way I was gaining all these these um, certificates as well. So I went back to practice as a naturopath. But even then, um, even in my 40s, I decided that I wanted to get pregnant. And I thought, well, some maternity leave would be good. And so I ended up back in corporate again. And that was kind of the worst breakup that I've ever had, that, that final corporate job that went really badly and it was at that point that I decided I, I have to completely surrender. And that was my midlife crisis. That was my menopausal transition. It was horrendous. I was physically well because I knew all the stuff about physical health and I thought that I would be fine because menopause was just about hot flushes and and whatever, wasn't it? But it was... The, the spiritual journey that or the, the energetic, the rite of passage of menopause that I was not prepared for because I wasn't on track in my life. I was resisting. You know, here I am in my 50s now, bru- bruised and battered, Karen, really by life, but finally surrendered, at least somewhat, and everything around me is teaching me to surrender even more to this, you know, sacred duty, if you want to call it that. And uh, I don't know how much your listeners are into the, you know, the more esoteric side of things, but I imagine they might be. I wasn't like that 30 years ago, but I'm certainly like that now. And, you know, what that's all about for me is the women's women's wisdom. And, you know, that's a whole other topic um, we could go into if you want. Did I answer your question? You did, yeah. There's a few questions that have come out of it, I think. What you said about going through a midlife crisis, I actually think most of us do. When we hit menopause and where I went with it was, oh, I wonder if the spiritual, emotional, mental transition actually creates, in a way, the physical symptoms because most of us by the time we get to menopause are really off track from where we want to go or where we wanted to be or where we ought to be. Because we're used to, for various reasons, cramming ourselves into these expectations, whether it's full-time parenting, whether it's working a particular job, whether it's meeting others' expectations. And I think there comes a point, or this is, and and I can only talk about me really, but I'm kind of looking at other people and going, yeah, you probably experienced something similar. But it was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm so far out of alignment. Yeah. that everything feels wrong. It just feels wrong. And so menopause for me was pretty hideous, not really because of the physical symptoms, but mentally and emotionally I was an absolute wreck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's taken me a long time to get over it and go, oh, my goodness, I can just see that I was so out of alignment with who I am yeah. and didn't wasn't even aware anymore of who I really was and what was important to me I kind of was in some areas but not around me myself and I think that sounds like the same thing for you I'm not going to put this on other people but I kind of suspect that that might be the case for a lot of us I think it is for everyone because what happens is that estrogen withdraws estrogen hijacked us when we were 13 and that, that's for a purpose. You know, it's not just estrogen, obviously. It's progesterone and the other hormones of, of reproduction. And so, you know, who we are at, at 15 is very different to who we are at 8. And so we become this woman geared for the survival of the species, which is the biological urge, biological imperative, and so who we are, who we come to know ourselves as is based on us as someone estrogen driven, estrogen fueled. And then at midlife, estrogen withdraws, the tide goes out. 
And so who we were at 45 or 40 is not who we are at 50 or 55. It's more we're more like we were at eight than we were at uh, 15 or 25 or 35. And so the biological drive now is not reproduction. So our identity as reproductive women no longer is, is no longer necessary. It's finished its purpose. We've had the children. We're moving now from the mother phase into the grandmother phase. Different hormones drive that. The different hormones that come up now are FSH and LH. And I think of the pineal gland, which has insight and wisdom and intuition and oversight. All these things come to the fore. And these are the hormones that drive the grandmother phase of life, which is still survival of the species, but a different job. This job now is protecting the community. This is the, the you know, where our job is to protect the grandchildren and the, and the next generations. And so the research that I've been, been reading and absorbing has been all around the role of the postmenopausal woman as community leader. They're learning that from even the whales. They're doing whale research because they are one of the few animals that seem to have this menopause. And they've discovered that the role is of the, of the grandmother whales is leadership. And if you go to study also the Native American, particularly the Iroquois tribes, they have this governing system based on, number one, the clan mothers who are the community leaders. They understand what the community needs. They listen to the community questions and concerns. And then they, they, they work or they, they actually create the, the men's council and the men's council will discuss how the, the issues will be addressed. And then the men's council comes back to the, the clan mothers to decide, will we go ahead with this strategy? Are we happy with this? Is this, go, is this the right thing to do? And they go, they decide. And so, you know, this whole new perspective on purpose and on vocation and on what gives us value and what makes us important to community, to what's going on in the world right now. There's this absence of this protective, compassionate, responsible grandmother that so many of us are not stepping into that role because our value doesn't really, our, our culture doesn't really value that, that age for a woman. There's, there's this, it, it, it's spiritual, emotional and physical and the, the hormones are really just the drivers, they're, the, they're the, the vehicle that we are, but the rest of it is, is way bigger. And so coming to alignment that you're talking about, the kind of alignment that brings you to your next purpose because, you know, when you're having babies, your purpose is to raise babies, right? And when you're not having babies anymore, when you're past that phase, what's the purpose then? What is What are we meant to be doing after 50? And my own belief is we're meant, we're meant to find our purpose. Our health tells us to a large degree whether we found it or not because the more on purpose and aligned and happy and joyful we are, the, ha- the healthier we are. And these purposes tend to be giving back. They, they tend to be, you know, for me it's, it's an activist type of energy that's coming out of me. For others it might be charity. For others it might, but it's very protective. It's very, it's, there's a strong sense of injustice. And there's this, because oestrogen has gone, oestrogen is the hormone of compliance and yes, dear, whatever you want, dear, that, that's gone. That's, that was required for survival of the children. What is required for the survival of the, the whole community is how dare you? This, this is not right. This is like you can't sacrifice profit now for generational health. You can't do that. That's stupid. So this can't, certainly this has come up for me and I see it in a lot of women. And a lot of women find they've re, they're rediscovering natural medicine. This is women's medicine, nutrition. Um, And, you know, for me as a naturopath, herbalist, nutritionist, homeopath, all this this beautiful combination, I notice lots of women want to reconnect with this healing energy and these modalities that are not about profit. They're about 
about nature and aligning with nature and protecting nature, which is very much this feminine, and it's not just in women, it's in men as well. Men become more archetypally feminine post-menopausally or menopausally as well because their testosterone is declining relative. So, oh, my gosh, Karen, if you get me going, I could speak for hours, but there's, there's a lot in that that's political, that's sociological, that's historical, that's health, that's patriarchal, you know, like that's a whole lot of stuff in there. <laughs> it is. And I was going to say to you as you were talking, one of the big thing, one of the big gripes that I have is I, I was watching an ad, um, Trini and Susanna, who used to do What's Not to Wear, and she's got lots of ads on at the moment, Trini, because she's got all this makeup and everything. But she's got a video that's gone viral on YouTube. Somebody sent it to me the other day. and The person who sent it to me thought that this video was great. But what Trini opened up with was, you know you're getting to the end of your life when the wrinkles start happening and we've got to stop that kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, disagree completely with that. That mm. is something we really need to stop because it's that thinking is so limiting and so disempowering to us as women. And one of the things that I really want to share is what if it's not the end of life as well? It is the end of life as we know, it, but it's not the end. It's You don't sit around and wait to die for the next 20 or 30 years. There's so much we can be doing. And instead of looking it on, that's the end, there's not a lot I can do now. How about looking on it as, okay, now what? New phase of life. Where do I go from here? Mm. Well, that is culture speaking. That is the, that is how the majority think. I think that my job and your job is to awaken women to the alternative perspective and gradually, gently, glacially we'll do that. Um, that's what fuels HRT sales and there's nothing wrong with HRT. But I think that it fuels a lot of fear of ageing and fear of losing our looks and it's okay to have vanity goals. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I notice is that we're an economic culture. We're capitalist, we're, we're largely Christian, we're largely patriarchal and in that world, Women of reproductive age are highly valued and they, they look their best. That's the bloom of life, right? It's the pinnacle. But my experience is that it's actually not the prime time of a woman's life. The prime time of a woman's life is her 50s and 60s. And it's the combination of 50 years of experience on the planet and, you know, having babies and losing babies and, and birthing projects and, and, and losing husbands and living emotionally living and emotionally evolving and then on top of that this hormonal drive for protecting those coming after us which I think is biological I think that's nothing we can do about that that's just as biologically driven as wanting to have babies so you know and I, I think that in order for women to awaken to this time of their life being the prime time of their life and then understanding that when they realise that, that they want to take care of themselves, they, their self-esteem rises, they're more likely to eat better, they, they, can, they can take time for rest because they're not driven to, to succeed in a world that doesn't really work anymore. We need to be more yin in our 50s and 60s because it's the autumn phase of life and autumn is, is more yin than summer. We need to slow down a little bit for time, for reflection time, to find out who we are, what makes us tick, what we want our purpose and the rest of our life to be. And then the, the, the wrinkles don't matter. The vanity still never goes away. You know, I kind of do this and, and put the, the, you know, the filter on Zoom so I look a bit young. I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that, but we don't want to be defined by that. We don't want to value ourselves or devalue ourselves because we don't look full bloom anymore. And if you think about the beautiful analogy of the, the, the rose, you know, the maiden is the rosebud, the full bloom rose is the mother, and in the, the crone or the marga or the postmenopausal, we've got the rose hip. 
And inside the rose hip is all the, the wisdom and intelligence of that whole, that whole lifetime as well as the seeds for the next generation. When you start to view yourself as that rose hip and start to align with that, it's a very different perspective on the value and the contribution that you can make to our culture. And, you know, this, this, this is the time women want to go back to study. They want to go and travel and find themselves. They want to start their business. It's, it's a, a passion project. And I encourage all of that because if we're really aligned Mostly that will be some kind of contribution to the world that the world really needs. I mean, I, I, I'm reluctant, I'm learning at the moment, Karen, not to see the world as broken mm-hmm. and needing fixing because it turns me into this woman that is a rescuer and I feel like I'm responsible for everything that's going on in the world and it's completely overwhelming and then disempowering. What I want is to know in my heart that my job this time around or this time of life is to share this wisdom and it's that that gets me up every morning. It's that that has me not be small. It's that that has me be courageous so that I can speak and say things and offer myself and it's that that has me sit here creating courses or programs at the moment so I can teach the wisdom of the kitchen the wisdom of the of culinary herbs the wisdom of the blood mysteries and what your what your periods teach you and and you know that that's what that drives me to to do all of that stuff so that I can deliver my purpose to the world and yeah, some women will magnetize to that. Some women will want to be a part of that. And that's my business, not profit for the for profit's sake, but profit because that tells me that I'm, I'm landing on what people want. The market is interested in what I have to say. The world is ready. And so, yeah, I think we need to be very courageous to live a life on purpose and to like that beautiful quote with the, you know, ending up at the end of your life, which I think is 90 or 100, not 50, you know, with champagne in one hand, strawberries in the other, sliding in like you're sliding into home base, used up, completely finished, you know, you're all done and then pop off pop off the planet, you know, you, your legacy is, is solid. It's funny you say that because, Oh, probably about 15, 16 years ago, I was doing a personal development course and I was standing up getting some coaching, which is a rare event because I know how painful it is to stand up there and get coaching. So I didn't put myself under it very often. But in this particular session, the leader said to me, do you know what? On your tombstone, they're going to engrave, died with potential intact. And I went, oh, that's so mean. (laughs) Also true. It was also true because it was it was about playing small and it was about listening to, well, you're getting towards the end of your life now, you're coming up to menopause. There's not going to be a lot after menopause. You just hang around and wait for your kids. And and even the guy was saying to me before it even reached menopause, stop it. stop it but a lot of us do that and I find it so that's one of the things that I really in doing all of these podcasts that's what the one thing if I want to change anything that's the one thing I want to change which leads me on to what I was actually gonna say which was how do you see the world as not wanting to be fixed how do you do that I I learned this through my relationship I, I met my life partner fairly late. Uh, I was in my early 40s when I met him. And I was, I was pretty broken, actually, at the time. I thought I was pretty broken. And I, I failed a lot of things. I got to sort of that 40 and went, what have I done with my life? Where have I been? I've been like a brat the whole time. I, I was very critical of myself. I'm a Virgo. I'm very self-critical. And then I met him and he was 
he was coming out of a relationship that had kind of not broken him, but you know, he was he was a bit broken as well. And we had <laughs> these two broken <laughs> people coming together. And you know, it was a difficult process. You know, they say that relationships are a spiritual journey, as is as as is business, maybe as is everything. And he, you know, there was it was a blended family, there was all those challenges involved. And I wasn't very mature. I wasn't very emotionally mature. My emotional intelligence, even though I wouldn't have agreed with it, I was pretty low because I'd done a lot of personal development as well. And, you know, I'd been to counselling and over the years done a lot of, and I'd, be, I'd become a coach. I knew a lot of stuff, but I wasn't practising any of it. Anyway, the relationship, because I was desperate to keep the relationship. I'd had so many and so many go pear, pear-shaped. And so I couldn't leave. My MO was to just leave. That was my escape route, right? And so I had to stick around. And then after a while, I discovered that when I felt broken, when I felt inadequate, when I was focusing in on my inadequacies, he was broken. It was a full projection. When I felt whole and complete, in integrity, whole and complete. And, you know, that doesn't last. That's a kind of momentary thing where you where, where you get that it, it is as it is, it isn't as it is, and it is as it's meant to be, all those kinds of things. So when I was complete, he was perfect. When I was incomplete, he was broken. And so I think that prepared me for what's going on for me right now because I'm, like a lot of people, I'm not terribly happy about what's going on in the world and how it's being dealt with. And I I got myself really frightened by all the messages, all the the counter messages, which are a lot of doom and gloom and conspiracy theories. And there's some truth in there somewhere, but it was, I was going down the rabbit hole. And then I, I, I thought how much of this viewing the world as broken is impacting me. And so it was, it was, it, it kind of worked the other way around. I was seeing the world as, as broken and then making myself the martyr person who, who can fix it. If I only reach enough people, if I only evangelize my point of view on the V word and the C word and all the rest of it, I'll convince enough people that I'm right. And it was, it was very righteous. It was very get off your high horse, Brenda. And so, in order for my own preservation and my own sanity, I've gone, this isn't working. This is not how it works. I I don't want to get to 60 having ripped my guts out, worked my guts out to change the world and realise that that you can't change it. You can't. You're not meant to. But you can be the best version of yourself and experience yourself as a loving being and create that or magnetise people around you who who need to remember that themselves. And then my own world, my own universe is a different experience, a completely different experience. And I I find that, I don't know, maybe you do as well with clients. My clients are my inspiration. They, They keep me going. They, at the moment, I remember how good I feel when I'm working with somebody and I recognize from their iris some kind of tendency and then I can I can prescribe a herb or a bark flower or a or a food or something that that brings comfort to them and 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 the love that's in that the love that's in a herb the love that's in healing and it reminds me that that's what we're here for not to judge not to make wrong, not to be divisive, not to preach, not to create some worldly um, declaration that everybody's doing the wrong thing and that, you know, I'm the one that's meant to fix it. I, you know, it's it's destined to disappointment. It's You're a great like listener, Karen. You are a great listener. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how people come on the podcast and they tend to be quite reticent but there is something just listening allows them to really be themselves and really 
tell me who they are and what's important to them. So I actually love it. I like just creating that space for people and people will talk into it. And I get to hear the real them. It's absolutely perfect. I do exactly the same thing in clinic and coaching. Do you? Exactly the same thing. Hold the space. Yeah, hold the space. It's and say not too much. <laughs> yeah. And it's really difficult sometimes because I want to kind of join in the conversation, but that's not appropriate. It's just time to, you know, this is your conversation. It's time mm. to give you the space. And then I'll ask you a question, which, again, I've completely forgotten. Because <laughs> I think going back to what you were just saying about the situation in the world right now, my and I react to certain things I don't like being manipulated and I used to say to the kids because I've got four kids and I used to say to them don't ever try to manipulate me I can spot it blindfolded in the dark at 100 paces with my back turned and I might not be able to specifically say what the manipulation is but I get it and I don't like all the manipulation that's going on and that that's when I dig my heels in and I go yep no you pack it in leave me alone now and I'll go and make my own decision thank you (laughs) yeah I totally hear you and Um, and that's what I find and it doesn't matter which I'm not talking about either side of the fence here Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about there's manipulation and that is not not good okay so yeah I just want to that was my two pennants on that (laughs) You were saying because you missed out manipulation. I thought, is she going to say manipulation? You didn't. I went, oh, manipulation as well. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, it's a trigger word as well. And I've started to recognise that my ego is what's reacting. Mm. And it's only because the reaction that I'm having isn't working for me, for my well-being, that I'm starting to look at what's the next step what what what's beyond an ego reaction? How can I be an activist and a and a, a light worker and a and a change maker? Contrary to what I was saying before, how can I live my purpose with the without the reaction, the angry reaction, or the you know the injustice or the ego reaction? And I'm kind of in the state at the moment of I'm not sure. It's like if I didn't have that, what would be driving me? Yeah, uh, see, for me, it's slightly different because it's a mother reaction it's there is a mothering so I used to say to my kids don't try and manipulate me I don't want the story I don't want any he said she said I don't want anybody's opinion you just tell me the facts what's the what so and that's where it comes yes. from with me it's that response to it's like that it's the mother it's a mother reaction in me you know I would say it's the mother and now the grandmother, which yes. is what I was talking about before, this in this really heightened sense of injustice and a desire to protect. Mm. It's very primal, I hear you. Yeah. And Wait. so it's not, and, and, and that's a recognition of who I am, and I think we also need to recognise that in ourselves, that if we have a reaction, it's not sometimes, a lot of the time it's coming from ego, don't get me wrong, but I've recognised this as, I want to, right, this is me as as mother, grandmother, like over mother, you know, right, stop, you're misbehaving there, yes, not exactly. acceptable. So the, there is also a difference where we can't necessarily make ourselves wrong for a reaction because we might actually be disempowering ourselves rather than using it to purpose. So I'm not meaning to lecture you and I know I am. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 you're, you're, you're sort of defining my last few months of, the dialogue that's been going, the conversation, the discussion that's been going on in my head about how to not burn out my adrenals and my liver with with the reaction, which is very strong for me as well, and to to remain on purpose without, you know, capturing that protective mechanism without destroying myself. Yeah, that's a good point because for me it comes down to core values. It's like there's no honesty. It's, It's out of alignment with my core values. And it's ta- don't get me wrong, it's taken me a long time to accept the reaction because I've copped a lot of criticism for it, as you can imagine. <laughs> the reaction isn't ego. It's actually, it's a care thing. It's exactly the same as when the kids well, come home and do something, you know? There's, and so just... Yeah. 
and I don't know if we want to labor this point, but no, I, I think there's the it's the positive ego and there's the negative ego. Mm. And even the positive ego we need to become friends with and have it work for us rather than us work for it. And so that's that's <laughs> I'm just realizing there's a whole rabbit hole we could go down here. And we've been talking for 40 minutes already. So, so let's let's <laughs> move on. Gone Chloe. Past. That's really gone fast. Yeah. So but I really appreciate it as well because this is a, still on the topic of us as middle-aged women, older women stepping into our power. It's about discovering our power. And in the conversation we're having where we're trying to kind of grasp our way through a really thorny topic, it's actually really useful for both of us because we're defining ourselves yeah. as we're doing it and, and mm-hmm. just trying to see things and work things out. So I actually think it's perfect. We need to do that rather than just kind of making it wrong or, you know, oh, I've, got, I've got to be another, I'm not, I'm all ego. It's just, okay, let's have a look at it from a different viewpoint. Yeah. And also there's the journey. You know, one of the things about women's medicine and, and you know, if, you, if we come back to the women's mysteries and the rites of passage and menopause is just one of those rites of passage, same with menarche and, or menarche, however you want to say that, first period, motherhood, birth and death are all rites of passage. So we're on this complete journey. Mm. And so, you know, where you're at on the journey determines your perspective. So, you know, and it's it's the, the women's journeys about circles, you know, or spirals. We, you know, we you oh. could come back to this again and you think, oh, I've dealt with this ego stuff and there it pops up again because something's more challenging and so... There is no wrong. There is only facets. And so this is it's a beautiful way to to I think the circle perspective because women are all about circles and cycles and, we, and circles are magical. There's something very special about curves and circles and cycles. We do need to appreciate each other's perspective. We do. And I, uh, so where I went with the circles thing, because I totally agree with you. And that's one of the most annoying things about personal development, isn't it? You go, but I dealt with this 10 years ago. Absolutely. <laughs> Got to deal with it again. But the, where I went with, with the circles was actually a Fibonacci sequence, mm-hmm. which, and, and I don't know how that comes into it, but that was just the image I was getting as you were talking, was it? Hundred percent Fibonacci, and then the the golden rule and sacred geometry, which the stuff that we learn in school is all the sanitized stuff. But there's a lot more to a lot of this stuff than um, than we realize. But yeah, where I think the the beautiful thing is that you know it helps us to understand that we're okay. If I could have one wish, it would be that women feel good about themselves on the inside and on the outside. Mm. And I use the body as a, not just a barometer, but as a, as a language that teaches the person where they need to go for healing. And so this body whispering skill has come out that I'm teaching people about if your adrenals are shot, what that means, that means too much fear, that means too much busyness, that not enough yin in your life. Um, and, and, you know, if, if there's an, not enough yin, then maybe there's a, a dysfunctional relationship to the feminine. Not that we need to go into all of this in a, in a first couple of sessions, but it informs the healing process for the woman. And, you know, that you don't get a sore knee or an upset gut or a headache for no reason. There's a, there's a message inherent in all of that. And if we li- listen with the perspective of this nothing wrong, so our Western medicine makes everything, and this is a generalisation, but it everything's broken that needs to be fixed, which goes back to our whole conversation, Karen. We've got this bit of a theme that what if your anxiety wasn't that you're broken? What if your sore joints wasn't because you're broken? What if your cancer wasn't because you're broken? But it's simply the body's way of saying, darling, you've gone off track. You're not taking care of yourself. You're ignoring something. You've buried something. You need to listen and use that as the guide back to alignment, back to centre, back to source. And that's how I see, 
that's the kind of medicine that I want to teach people and I want to practice because that's women's medicine and that's body, mind and spirit medicine. And I think that's where our our tribal cultures, um, some of the more, well, all of them, I suppose. I mean, I'm, I'm in love with the Indian culture particularly because I love some of their wisdom, which, by the way, they say you're not a grown-up until 52, and I totally agree with that. But a lot of the, the, the West, a lot of the herbs that come to herbal medicine practitioners like myself come from the Native American tradition. Um, I'm sure there's a lot in the Aboriginal tradition as well, but we don't know those so well. So I've just gone around and around about and discussed a few more things with you, but I love this concept of we're not broken. We're just, and the world is not broken. We are just projecting. How about that one for a doozy? Oh, I like that one. I do like that one. That's a good one. So just wrapping up now, how do people tell, now all of your details will be on the webpage, but just tell people a little bit about how they can get in touch with you and what <sighs> you've got on offer at the moment. Okay, so I'm on Facebook and I was reluctantly on Facebook, like I rebel against everything, but so far nothing's, nobody's shot, shot um closed me nobody's shut my my groups down but I have the menopause lounge there which is a growing group for these kinds of conversations Brenda Rogers um, is there as well just as my Facebook page they're just kind of like hello get to know you type of things and same with my website which is qwomen.com.au q for quintessence um, because I love the quintessence of that's a whole other story. And I'm in the process of creating some beautiful places for women to meet and eventually men as well to connect with their feminine essence and their, their wise woman and their, their body, mind and spirit sides. So obviously I have my consulting, but I'm, I've got a retreat for March 2022 and a, a, a women's wisdom circle, which is free, which is going gangbusters, just so women can feel seen and heard. I'm on LinkedIn and, and so on. So there's lots of ways of finding me and reaching out and having a conversation. And I offer a free 30-minute chat to help women decide where they'd like to, you know, how they'd like to progress and move forward um, and various offers along the way. but. Uh, Getting onto my newsletter email list is the best and they can do that through my email address, which is below, brenda at qwomen.com.au. Thank you for that. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. We'll have to talk again and go into more of this because I'm really fascinated now. This was a great conversation. Thank you. I'd love to. for joining us this week on menopause marriage and motherhood make sure you subscribe to the show on your favorite player and while you're at it we'd love you to leave us a rating on itunes or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show that would be amazing too be sure to tune in next week for the next episode and remember if you're busy thinking about what you can't have how on earth are you going to enjoy what you can have see you next week